live from my parents' pantry. It was the only place I could find to really get alone. Kids are going to be waking up soon. Everyone else will be waking up soon. My dad will probably wake up soon. I started a little early today, just because I needed to get it done before everything went cuckoo around here. So, good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Genesis 38. I think we'll start chugging along now and get the rest of this story knocked out. So it says in verse 12, right, that in the process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died, and Judah was comforted and went up to the sheep shearers at Timnah, he and his friend Hira the Adulamite. And he, it was told to Tamar, saying, Look, your father-in-law is going up to Timnah to shear his sheep. So she took off her widow's garments, covered herself with a veil, and wrapped herself, and sat in an open place, which was on the way to Timnah. For she saw that Shelah was grown, and she was not given him as a wife. Um, which for what it's worth according to the numbers 2620 he does end up getting married so for what it's worth that guy um, you know it's not that he never got married either um, verse 15 and when Judah saw her he thought she was a harlot because she had a face covered uh, then he turned to her by the way and said please let me come into you for he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law so she said, what will you give me that you may come into me? And he said, I will send you a goat from the flock. So she said, will you give me a pledge till you send it? So then he said, what pledge shall I give you? And she says, your signet and cord and your staff that is in your hand. Then he gave them to her and he went into her and she conceived by him. So she arose and went away and laid aside her veil and put on the garments of her widowhood. And Judah sent the young goat by the hand of his friend, the Adulamite, to receive his pledge from the woman's hand. But he did not find her. Then, that's my alarm going off saying it's almost time to do your live stream. There you go. And then he did not find her. And then he asked the men of that place saying, where is the harlot who was openly by the roadside? And they say, there was no harlot in this place. Verse 22. So he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. Also the men of the place said, there was no harlot in this place. Then Judah said, well, let her take them for herself, lest we be shamed. For I sent this young goat and you have not found her. So, not looking great on his part about going and, and seeing a prostitute. But, in short, that's what happens. is uh, He's, he's got to go party. His wife died. They're trying to cheer him up. You know, it sounds like friends, right? Um, and he sees her, and her face is veiled. And in that culture, that was a sign that she was a prostitute. She kept her identity hidden. So she dressed up intentionally like a prostitute. She asked for a pledge. So the signet and the staff, those would be like kind of unique and special items, which in some ways shocks me that he would give them as a pledge. Maybe just showing how you know depraved and desperate he was in the moment. Like, I'll give anything at this point um, to go into this harlot. And so, again, she conceives and she takes off. He tries to get his signet, you know, his my seal of approval of the proof who I am kind of a thing and get it back but there's no one there and so he just kind of well whatever well verse 24 says it comes to pass about three months after that Judah was told Tamar your daughter-in-law has played the harlot furthermore she is with child by harlotry so Judah said bring her out that we, that, let her be burned when she was brought out she sent her father-in-law saying by the man to whom these belong I am with child she said Please determine whose they are, the signet, the cord, and the staff. So Jude acknowledged them and said, She has been more righteous than I, because I did not give Selah my son, and he never knew her again. It came to pass at the time for giving birth, that behold, twins were born in her womb. So it was when she gave birth that uh, one put out his hand, and the midwife took the scarlet thread and bound his hand, saying, This one came out first. Then it happened as he drew his hand back, that his brother came out unexpectedly, and she said, How did you break through? And so... Uh, now the this breach be upon you therefore his name is Perez which means breakthrough afterwards his brother came out who had the scarlet thread on his hand his name was Zera um what does Zera mean Zera means I should know this do, 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 do. I don't know what Zera means hmm anyway so I know what Perez means it means breakthrough 
Um, like Baal Perez, God of the Breakthrough. David names a place after he gets a victory there. So here's what we have going on in this chapter, just kind of working things through. For one, we see with Judah wanting to take her out and burn her because she had played the harlot. And he finds out it was with him. You know, this is kind of the scenario of what we have in Matthew chapter 7. When Jesus talks about, judge not lest ye be judged, for what with measure you judge, you'll be measured back with. You know, it's the idea of hypocritical judgment. That quite often we see sin in other people, and it's so very wicked, and yet we got sin in our lives. And we want to judge people by these hard, you know, rules and that yet somehow with ourselves we want to be let off easier judge more lightly i like how my pastor always put it and he got it from somewhere else that the uh we want to judge others by their actions but we want others to judge us by our intentions i didn't mean to do that well again we judge others by what they do but we want everyone else to understand you know why we did what we did and well, we should have that kind of judgment across the board if that's what we want to have now, it's worth noting, uh, Tamar ends up making her way into the genealogy of Christ, and she's one of the few women listed, along with Rahab, Ruth, and Bathsheba. And if you know any of those women... Oh, my dad's right outside the door. He's right there. He's walking by. He just walked by. Now he's going to hear me, because of the delay of the live stream, saying that he just walked by. All right. Anyway, um... But none of these women have orthodox stories. Maybe it's my kid with the phone. They're standing right outside the door. Anyway, the idea is, though, is that, you know, we find uh, this interesting story with Tamar. Rahab, who was a harlot. We have Bathsheba, or Ruth, who was a Moabitess. Godly woman, but a Moabitess, nonetheless. Uh, and Bathsheba who through adultery makes her way in to the storyline too. So it's just fun to watch how God continues to redeem all these people and bring them in, you know, and he's redeeming people to make them a part of what he is doing. And so that's what God wants to do with you too. He wants to take us, redeem us, and bring us in to become a part of the thing that he is doing here on earth. So that finishes up Genesis 38 for us. I'm keeping it relatively short because got to get a lot of stuff done today before we head back to our parenting intensive workshop or seminar workshop yeah that's what it is it's a workshop doing work so all right you guys take care and i'll see you guys around